If your mixes don't sound polished, you're probably making one of these five mistakes. These five fixes will instantly make your song sound more polished. I'm gonna even show you some real examples inside my Logic session so that your songs finally start to sound like the artists you love. Over 200 of my students have already used these to go from unsure to pro level. Let's start with the first big mistake though that I see in nearly every beginner's project. So would you be able to tell here what track would be made by a beginner and what would be made by a pro? Let's have a listen. A big problem a lot of beginners make here is just using the stock Logic Drummer sounds. This is the first track that I played. But now let's level up this drummer track by taking the example of the second track we played here, which actually started out as a drummer track, but I just made it sound more authentic. Many times I'll actually use the Logic Pro drummer tracks to get pattern ideas, but then I just substitute the sounds so it fits better in my production. So if you want your drums to sound professional, how can you do the same? Step one is to use the Logic Pro drummer track, but customize it until you find a pattern that works. Don't worry about the sounds yet, just the groove. Step two, convert this drummer track to MIDI. Step three, now you can take this MIDI data and attach it to any new sound. Step four, find the drum samples that you like to use to replace the drummer track. For me, I use a mix of drum samples from libraries like Splice or Native Instruments to get a sound. Same pattern, but completely different vibe, just by swapping out the sounds with something like Splice or Native Instruments. Step five, it's not just as simple as popping in new sounds like this. Once you've swapped out the sounds, the next step is really dialing in on the groove. Tools like Battery here, or the Drum Machine Designer in Logic, let you tweak the details, like snappiness or length, so they fit better in your mix and get you closer to that polished sound. So how do you do this on your own? You will need to invest into a drum library, once you do so, you can add your drum samples to like the drum machine designer and Logic, which give you the flexibility to edit them. If you can't afford it right now to invest in any drum library, you can use what you have available in Logic and you still can use the drum machine designer to tweak these details. But the value of a drum library will just help you reach that pro level faster. The next mistake is certainly the most noticeable and it's the reason your songs probably still sound like demos. If I was to ask you, what is the most important part of a production? What would you say? Now, if you said drums or bass, I might give you some bonus points for that, but the answer I'm looking for here is the vocal. A problem a lot of you are making is just not nailing the vocal performance, and it comes down to two reasons. Number one, you're just singing out of range. This means you're singing too low, or just too high for your natural voice. To solve this, don't rush into your production until you've decided on the key of the song that fits your voice the best. The second reason is, well, maybe you're just not a singer. So is there anything you can do about that? You could just be out of practice, like maybe you used to sing, but now you're singing again. So you need to warm up, sing a lot, and practice so your voice gets stronger. If you're just not a good singer in general, I wouldn't push it, but maybe work with someone who does sing, or you can use tools like Automy, which substitute your voice for an AI singer. Surprisingly, they've come a long way with this AI tool and it actually doesn't sound that bad. Here's an example of a song I just produced with one. So hard to leave. So far, so deep. The next mistake is something that most beginners don't do, but it's one of the biggest tells that you're missing out from getting that pro sound. And it has to do with just a single feature in Logic. These two tracks, which I'm about to play, sound almost identical at first, but one of them has a trick that completely changes its sound. Can you hear it? <laughs> The key difference is one of these tracks is using an aux track to create a sense of dimension to the sound. And it's not the aux track 
specifically that's creating this sound, but it's the plugins on the track doing it and the value of separating this track into an aux track. So why are you missing out on the pro sound from not using aux tracks? Aux tracks let you build more space and control, something that's hard to do just within the channel strip itself. For instance, Let's say I have a vocal track here that I want to create a sense of large space. Most beginners might just add a reverb plugin on the channel strip. And sure, it can sound good. And there's some flexibility that can still dial in on the sound within the reverb plugin itself. But to get a more pro sound, you can add an aux track and develop the sound by shaping it into something more authentic. You can even go further too by automating this aux track to make it come even more to life like this. So hard to leave So far so deep Where to ends me We're getting older, it ain't over, let it be Also, the added benefit of using aux tracks, also known as summing stacks in Logic, is the productivity to add plugins to multiple tracks. Notice how all these vocal tracks are summed up into one nice folder. The next mistake is so crucial to solve since it makes up a huge piece of getting that pro sound. So this is a dead giveaway that this session was made by a beginner. But when I play it, can you actually hear what it is? These tracks are stock or unauthentic. This type of music could be great for background music, but it's missing that authenticity that comes from pro music. So what are you supposed to do with this, right? Especially if you don't have the budget to hire great session players, or let's say even afford some of the paid virtual instruments. Well, the answer here is just to find the authenticity within the free instruments that you're using in Logic. Let's take an example here to unpack this a bit. So let's listen to this stock sound. Now, by spending time with it, I can get it to sound like this. So what did I do there? Like, how did I get that to happen? It's gonna sound a little bit cheesy, but I actually just played with the dials until it felt right. And suddenly it just sounded authentic to me as the producer. The next tip drives me crazy and it only takes two seconds to fix, but can be dreadfully confusing if you miss it. Using automation is great, but most beginners will automate their volume like this. And technically this isn't wrong. However, it opens up a big problem. For example, in a couple days, if I'm mixing this song and I want to turn up the guitar track, I would do something simple like increase the volume fader, right? Well, now watch what happens when I press play. It jumps back to where the volume automation was set. And sometimes you miss this and you don't actually see it, which means the volume increase that you tried to do didn't happen at all. So to fix this, use a relative volume automation like this, or better yet, just add a gain plugin and do a gain automation so that your volume fader isn't affected. As you tackle these mistakes, you're gonna realize another 10 are gonna pop up and stop you from reaching that polished sound. So watch this video here, and I'll show you the most important part to pro sound, which is the production. Watch me produce a song from start to finish, from the first loop to the final mix and everything in between. This one is big, so I'll see you in there.